Lagos Speaker swears in APC new member Nahim Adams as lawmaker representing Etiosa in the state parliament. Lagos Assembly passes bills seeking compulsory teaching of Yoruba language across schools in the state plus. Lagos Assembly confirms appointment of the state chief judge. demise of a member of the Lagos State House of Assembly representing Etiosa Constituency One. A State Assembly poll was conducted on the 30th of September, which saw a member of the All Progressives Congress, Nahim Adams, winning the contest. On the 23rd of October, it was sworn in by the Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Mudashiro Obasa, and formally welcomed into the Parliament. This is how we begin the show today. It's always a delight to have you join us on Lagos Parliament. I am Abimbola Agbebi. Get closer to your legislators. See them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions, and many more. Also, get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. on TVC News Nigeria. Lagos Parliament, bringing the legislature closer to you. Mr. Clark, can you now proceed to read your letter? Right Honorable Speaker, sir, distinguished Honorable Members, National Electoral Commission State Headquarters, 6 Burial Avenue, Sabu Yaba, Lagos, precisely from the Office of the Resident Electoral Commissioner. The letter is addressed to the Clerk of the House Lagos State House of Assembly and dated 12 October 2017. It is captioned, Authentication of Certificate of Return of Member Elect. Uri Adams Nohim Babatunde, he treats her. Reference to a letter LSHA LMC 286X1 slash 67 of 10th October 2017. A right to confirm and authenticate that the certificate of return issued to Adams Nohim Babatunde is from this office, authentic and genuine. Thank you in anticipation of your prompt accordance of this status, please. Signed, Balogun OO, for Resident Electoral Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Mr. Adams Nohim Babatunde, why I ask the clerk to invite him to step forward? Yeah, where is he? Ask him to step forward. To Legal officer. Is he here or the outside? Where are you taking it? Where? Okay, you go to the other side. This all taking will not happen again. Out of office of member, please I, I the name and read as follows. Please read. I Adams Hi, Adams Nohem about today. Do solemnly swear, affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That as a member of the Lagos State House of Assembly. I will perform my functions honestly to the best of my ability, faithfully 
and in accordance with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the law, and the rules of the Lagos State House of Assembly, and always in the interest of sovereignty, integrity, solidarity, well-being, and prosperity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that I will strive to preserve the fundamental objectives and directive, directive principles of state policy contained in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that I will abide by the code of conduct contained in the fifth schedule of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. Oath of Allegiance on Adams Noim Babatunde. Hi, Adams Noim Babatunde. Do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that I will preserve, protect, and def defend the construction of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. Majority Leader, can you please lead the Honorable Member to his seat? Baba Sunday, you are welcome once again. We are happy to receive you as one of us by the oath you have just taken. And I'm sure your presence here will contribute more to the development of this house and the state at large. We wish you all the best. Get closer to your legislators, Lagos Parliament. Bringing the legislature closer to you. I'm so happy. In fact, it's a dream come true. By the grace of God, um, we witnessed um, development within the access by the grace of God. Um, I've said it all. I'll be accessible to my people and I'll be available to them. When I'm accessible, they will tell me their challenges and I'll work on it. And when I'm available to them, any, t any point in time, I'll work on their needs. And by the grace of God, um, I'll try my utmost by the grace of God. And let me use the opportunity to sympathize with the family of um, late Honorable Kazim Ali. It's from God that will come and from God we must return to. The Honorable Ali has done his bit and is no more in, uh, in session. So it's unfortunate, but why it's unfortunate that he left? It's fortunate for the guy that is joining. So it's welcome, welcome him, welcome him to come and take his seat and uh, we welcome him to the parliament. We want him to give his people his good representations, you know, exhibit a good virtues that uh, the people of the constituency will be proud of him and will be happy to elect him. So he said, we welcome him to the house. For me, it's misfeeling for me. Is um, on, on one side, I'm sad. On the other side, I'm happy for the young man that just joined us. So uh, for me, I, I think um, he should just quickly settle down and learn the rope and try to help his constituency and continue for where Honorable Kasim Halimi, late Honorable Kasim Halimi, um, left it. He should also brace up to his responsibility as a lawmaker and try to imbibe good culture, good uh, uh, legacies that were laid for him, I, I, like I said, it's misfeeling for me, but I, I think he, he, the young man is going to do well. I, I think he's, he's going to excel. I think if he can just take it and uh, 
try to learn and be able to have value for his people is 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 a welcome development though very unpleasant to some of us Get closer to your legislators, see them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions and many more. Also get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators. Observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament, every Thursday 7.30pm on TVC News Nigeria. Lagos Parliament. Bringing the legislature closer to you. The Lagos State House of Assembly has passed into law the bill that now makes the teaching of Yoruba language compulsory in schools in the states. The passage of the bill came shortly after it scaled third reading on the floor of the House at the legislature's Yoruba plenary on Thursday. Both private and public schools in the state are expected to include the language among core subjects, while state-owned tertiary institutions are also expected to incorporate the use of the language as a course unit in their general Nigeria Studies GNS. The bill provided for a fine of 500,000 Naira for a corporate offender, while any school in the state which fails to comply with the law faces closure and a fine of 250,000 Naira. Let's say it is long overdue. And then, you see, there, there is a Yoruba adage that says, Omotuba so ilenu, osako yako. Suffice to say that when you forget about your culture or your cultural heritage, then you are doomed totally. And uh, I have to say this that. Uh, well, the Lagos State House of Assembly, under the leadership of Right Honorable Mudashi Obasa, we are doing marvelously well. Yoruba language as one of the course objects. When they are having admission into any of this uh, study of learning, and the, the, when you look at it, it will even help us to boost Yoruba language. We go back to the history. We go back to when where our or, or origin and uh, I, I i can assure you it is better for us and uh, i am happy i am among the people who actually forwarded the bill and i'm among these eight as of assembly who has passed this bill into law and work assiduously to make sure that the bill see the light of the day I have to, at this junction, thank the Right Honorable Speaker for his doggedness in making sure that better laws are made or emanate from Lagos State as of Assembly. It's a great one. It's a great one. And it must, you know, I think the Southwest as a whole must adopt this bill and pass it in the respective state houses. It's a nice one because. Passage of that, passing of that bill, we enable our words to learn our culture, our ways of life, our traditions, our norms, and it will be easier for them to understand what they are teaching them in schools. You see, when you in those days when we were young, if our mother just raised an eyebrow, we know what we know what she means, and today. A Yoruba child cannot speak Yoruba fluently, and it's, it's become an embarrassing thing. And if you go out, out there, you go to Germany, they speak their language and they teach their uh, children the language, and they teach them. Even Saudi Arabia, they teach them with the Arab, Arabic and the, the right Arabic. They speak, you know. Arabic language, you know, so the same thing, Indian. Um, so I feel what we have done is just to ensure that compulsory teaching of Yoruba in our schools, it will make those children to, as a matter of compulsion, know how to speak in Yoruba and know how to write in Yoruba. And that will go 
much as promoting our culture and it will not make our culture to go into extinction I will make our language to go into extinction. So it's a welcome development. And that is why this house too, we made it mandatory that we must deliberate and discuss in Yoruba language on Thursday. So that our teaming populace who cannot speak in English can hear us clean and clear. And it's even worth it writing the Constitution of the Federal Republic in Nigeria, translate it into Yoruba, especially those laws passed by this house. We've legislated on it and we've passed the motion that it must be you know be right in the uh, in Yoruba language so that those people who cannot read or write in English can uh, pick the law read it and understand what the law says and try to obey the rules uh, uh, obey the law of the land so it's a welcome development well um, I think I feel great I'm excited about it I could recall that in at the seventh assembly I uh, made uh, sponsor a motion where that was first of all um, taken as a resolution of the house and um, uh, coming today turning it to a bill is a dream come true we feel excited about it considering the fact that our language is gradually going into a station because um, a lot of us are seeing Europa as a as for vernacular, that's how we were brought up, and but now uh, it is time to go back to the basics. It's time to learn and teach our people, our, our children, um, Yoruba language, and we, uh, well, it, it's going to generate um, employment for some. It's going to bring interest to some young teachers and young people coming up to study Yoruba language and know more about our language and teach our language in all uh, aspects of our lives. I think it's, it's, it's the yearnings of our people. is something that the executive would ordinarily buy into. And I believe that uh, for me, I don't see any challenges uh, coming towards achieving the implementations of that particular law. Get closer to your legislators, see them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions and many more. Also get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators. Observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament every Thursday 7.30pm on TVC News Nigeria. Lagos Parliament bringing the legislature closer to you. The Lagos State House of Assembly has confirmed the appointment of the acting chief judge of Lagos State, Justice Okoyemi Olufumilayo. Okay. Justice Olufumilayo's appointment was confirmed recently by the legislature during the House's Yoruba plenary shortly after a screening session took place. Fielding questions from the lawmakers on the DK in the state judiciary and what she intends to do differently, Olufumilayo vowed to bring be, sanity to the system. She also spoke to journalists generally on our agenda. There, there is going to be um, some sort of policy that will be laid down. Maybe we use a um, practice direction to be able to ginger ourselves up and so on. So definitely we will look into that. I remember talking about um, cases that have stayed so long in the court. And um, my um, view of that is that there should be an ad hoc committee set up to look into how we can tackle this. You know, some party will just say, no, I just want to go, I want my case to go on trial. Um, some of the judges will be selected to preside over this case especially maybe dedicate their Saturdays to it because it's a matter of sacrifice. We have to make a sacrifice to get to where uh, we are going and to achieve what we have in mind in achieving. And that is eradicating, you know, old cases and so on. And um, if it needs amending our rules of court, we do that for them to be able to sit on Saturdays, you know, to have this matter resolved quickly. What I want to do during this administration is to make sure that um, all cases are a thing of the past. And then uh, there's going to be a lot of reorientation, 
not only among ourselves as judges, but also other stakeholders. We really need to do that. Away from that story, the use of the title Honorable by local government chairmen and councillors in Lagos formed part of deliberations on the floor of the Lagos State House of Assembly recently. Uh, this is an chamber where we make laws and formulate policy. The policies. issue was raised by the Deputy uh, Majority uh, Leader, Honorable Olumiwa Jimo, who feels that there is need for local government chairmen and councillors in the state to understand hierarchy in Nigerian politics. The constitution has given us those powers. The issue, however, generated mixed reactions among the lawmakers as they made efforts to give meaning to who truly should be addressed as a honorable in government. Anybody that is coming here as a counselor should not call himself honorable. But you cannot instruct people not to call them honorable outside. Uh, this is an chamber where we make laws and formulate policy for the state. Uh, when uh, I'm not aware that elected council chairman are honorable members. And uh, I don't want them to leave this honorable chamber with the impression that uh, they are honorable members, especially the councillors. They are designated by law and the constitution of this country to be councillors. Councillor is councillors. I don't think it's appropriate to be addressing them as a honorable member. I'm not threatened by the word honorable if they share that. But at the same time, People like her, Hoda colleague, Honorable Yaya Dosumo, will not be comfortable if some of the chairman of SCDAs in his constituency is being addressed as honorable member. I think uh, for you to be honorable member, you must be somebody that is formulating policy for the state and making law for the state. But I'm not being threatened calling anybody honorable. I would prefer being called Olumu Iwajimo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is becoming unbecoming. Uh, if you just uh, show intention that you want to go for just a councillorship election, you become an honorable. For those who have not even uh, um, printed posters, they are called honorable. And if care is not taken, they bastardize the name honorable. So we don't know the real honorable and the fake honorables. And if there's a need for us to promulgate a law that we forbid you, if you're not a member of the House of Assembly or a member of the House of a Rep, to be, let it be, Mr. Speaker. But to me, is that they bastardize uh, the, the name, and I concur with him that uh, we should just restrict the use of the name, and this house should not uh, legalize that illegality. Thank you, sir. Um, in as much as we haven't made any law on, on that um, aspect, we all know that um, it is what we're used to. It, there's precedence to that effect. It has become the tradition of Nigerians that the legislators and the um, um, and the legislators, both in the state's houses of assembly and the um, House of Representatives, are the honorable members. I feel that um, when a chairman who is an executive starts to say he's honorable, whatever, we have never seen a governor who is an executive stand up to say he's an honorable member. I think we should cut our coats according to our styles. And like we normally say, they should maintain their lanes, Mr. Speaker, because the second term of our governor is real. And if they also want another term as chairman, they need to maintain their lanes. The councillors, however, they are the lower tier of legislative arm. And when you look into in the judiciary, you will never see a magistrate call herself her lordship. And I think that we must actually respect the hierarchy of politics, particularly the legislative arm. I was a councillor. When I was a councillor, I didn't call myself, even when I became a member of this house, you know, I always tried to run from that appendage, honorable, honorable. So I don't introduce myself as, uh, as honorable. My name is Obasa, my name is Obasa. But you discover that as a councillor, people around, we always refer to you as honorable, honorable, even without your own knowledge or instructions, they'll call you honorable. So what do you do about this set of people? It's an experience that I have witnessed in the past, and I'm sure it's still happening wherever you go to, people will call you honorable, honorable, even when you are not willing to be called one. 
So what do you do? That is the issue. And if uh, Honorable went further to inform us that even those that showed interest, aspiration, just aspiration, immediately after that, they become what? Honorable. <laughs> so except we want to limit it to this uh, hello uh, chamber that we should just anybody that is coming here as a counselor should not call himself honorable but you cannot instruct people not to call them honorable outside that is going to be difficult so i don't know what to do that i honorable talk. <laughs> mr speaker sir you see let me let me let's be sincere with ourselves sir to make laws you know the procedure sir yeah they also have and procedure the gentleman here when they were addressing him he was addressed as mr noim until he swore a note to a note mm -hmm. before he became an honorable and he was just an honorable member. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has not sworn a note to be an honorable member, he's not qualified. You are, things are, you going are missing wrong. it all. We are talking about the elected councillors and elected members. I agree with you. There is seniority in everything. The UK the other day, a councillor in UK, councillor admin, who is also from Nigeria, was the one giving us lecture. So they should understand the office they are in, rather than believing that they must be called honorable. They are counselor, so so, because it's the counselors that made up the councils. That's, that's the bottom line of the, act, of, of the argument. It's not about uh, seniority or whatever. We and like Honorable we Bio said, that. we have honorable beer. Mr. Speaker, on a serious note, I think I will subscribe to my colleagues, but however, I don't see anything bad if anybody calls himself an honorable member. But on the issue of honor, honor is dignity, what we call dignity. Honor is uh, Luomo, the person in you. In Italy, when you want to swear, they don't swear in the name of Chongo or Oya or God. They say, I swear with my honor. And once you violate that, they say you are no more honorable member, you can get killed anywhere because you have rubbish your honor. So a, a council law, the honorable member of the house, we are all, we are all honorable members. For example, anybody, is, because it's a now, anybody can wake up and call himself the Oba. No Oba in Nigeria will take him out to court. Since you've not called yourself the Oba of Lagos, then you are looking for problem. <laughs> but you can say, my name is King Bayo. No one will challenge you. But they will never say, I'm an honorable member of local government. You are looking for war. So on this note, sir. It's an honor. I think it is pardonable, sir. Thank you, sir, Mr. Speaker. The seniority, and we need to respect that seniority. But there is no law backing it. And besides, right, as put by Honorable Lowe, that it is a convention everywhere. So I'm sure anybody anywhere in Lagos State will call African Councillor Honorable. Only few will call him Councillor. That is just it. And on that note, it's a wrap on this week's episode of the program. Thank you for watching. To catch up with previous episodes of Lagos Parliament, log on to www.youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Abimbola Albibi. See you next week. Yeah.